Okay, hello and good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to JFD Traders Espresso with me, Darius Lonchowskis. Today is the 2nd of, of April uh, 2020, so yeah, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Thursday's morning session, morning recorded session, uh, where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. Um, but before we do that, as always, um, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so also just um, before we jump in into the charts, as a quick mentioning of our JVD YouTube channel, uh, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming uh, videos. Um, and of course, our JVD Bank website and specifically our JVD research page, which we update on a daily basis as well. So yep, feel free to visit us here on jvdbank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top. So. I believe you can find some useful information here for yourselves, guys. <laughs> um, so, um, now then, as always, before uh, it became kind of a tradition now <laughs> in my videos uh, to have a look at what's happening here in, in the world um, in regards to the coronavirus. Now, in the beginning of this week, I've, uh, I've told we were still kind of slightly below the uh, 700 zone and uh, 700,000 level, and... Uh, Basically, uh, what I was saying that well, by the end of this week, unfortunately, probably sadly, uh, that we will hit the one million number here. But um, uh, well, probably that's already inevitable. Uh, but uh, in general, guys, I hope you stay you, you're staying safe. I mean, I hope you're taking care of yourselves because. Again, uh, of course, there's a lot of conspiracy theories uh, out there, um, but the fact stays the fact that although, yes, there are different reasons probably what could have caused all this, but <clears throat> the fact stays the fact that, yes, we are, um, uh, well, we are getting infected. So, um, so yeah, guys, um, like I said, uh, try to kind of uh, stay safe, try to uh, keep your immune system running well. So, yep, and all will be fine. Um, now then, jumping into the charts, uh, the first one I want to touch on here is the German DAX here. Um, I looked at this one uh, this week when basically uh, I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this barrier here, the, uh, well, actually the, the area around the psychological 10,000 zone, and uh, we've managed to kind of, this area managed to hold again, and uh, well, I mean... Uh, the index yesterday drifted lower. Um, looking at the cash index right now, we can see that the price is uh, roughly around the 9,550 territory. So basically, um, it's uh, it's actually around the same level. So it didn't even uh, kind of drop below this 9,140 zone. So in other words, uh, we're keeping close eye on this barrier because these are uh, still the same idea remains for us on this on this index. We need to see a clear breakthrough one of the one of these levels because the, uh, for now the um, the index is kind of ranging here. And uh, yep, we need to see a clear breakthrough one of these highlighted areas here, either through the uh, ten thousand mark on the upside, and ideally we would like to see a daily close th uh, either above the ten thousand zone um, or uh, below the nine thousand one hundred forty territory. So, so, yep, for now, uh, there's not much to talk about here. It's basically, we're waiting. We're waiting for that cl uh, clear close outside of this little range. Um, the same story with the FTSE, but here the situation is slightly more interesting, maybe. Um, now, again, I had previously this downside line drawn here, but now we can get rid of it. Um, and now we'll mainly focus again on some of these uh, levels. So basically, on the downside, uh, previously I talked about this territory, the 5500 zone. Um, and uh, yesterday, we got a close below this. 
So finally, and in a way, this kind of increases the chances of a potential uh, drift lower. However, uh, of course, we'll keep an eye on the uh, on the index. I mean, right now the cash index is still below the 5,500 zone. So in a way, everything's kind of uh, playing out nicely here according to the plan, because the plan was that if we get a drop uh, and we did get a close below the 5,500 zone, then yep, we will aim for further declines. Uh, um, for now, like as I said, uh, the cash index is currently at around uh, 5,455, 50 zone, roughly around there. So basically still below this territory here. So in a way, if it continues to hold, if it continues to provide decent resistance, then yes, another uh, round of selling could be possible here. So that's why for now, be very careful, uh, be very cautious. And in other words as well, uh, some probably, some of you might see a, uh, maybe a potential kind of uh, descending triangle here. So I don't want to kind of draw this one here yet. Um, I'm going to overcrowd the chart, but yeah, we might see a descending triangle here as well. So which according to all the technical analysis rules uh, tends to break to the downside. So again, uh, for now, uh, like I said, we are more bearish than bullish um, because for us to get excited about higher levels, well, we would prefer to see a nice good strong push above the 5815 territory here um, that's the basically the high of the um, the 26th of March and uh, yep then we could aim for for further upside for now that's slightly off the table unless something really drastic happens and uh, we see a strong push higher here and a break above this barrier but as I said still we need to see a break of this barrier now then gold um, gold um, here the situation is um, also very interesting um, uh, basically it worked out according to the plan in the beginning of this week I was talking about the potential correction to the downside and what I was saying as well that <laughs> if this barrier here holds uh, the 1575 uh, territory continues to hold or this upside support line then yes we will aim for the this could lead to another round of buying so as you can see we had a nice drop so perfect um, perfect move lower we had a test of this 1575 territory um, and you can see that this is where the price is kind of uh, got well the price where the price got a hold up um, so and now the big question here is can we uh, see a continuation move to the upside here now uh, well actually I wouldn't say the word continuation but uh, just a move to the upside so of course for now as long as it uh, as long as it remains above this uh, 1575 territory or even the upside support line then yes we will aim for the upside um, however uh, given that the given the proximity to the upside line we should probably still remain somewhat let's say cautiously bullish here because again it, it could easily drop lower and break this upside line but again with the downside as I've mentioned previously we, we need to see a drop below the 1547 zone um, and then yep we could consider a deeper extension to the downside so yep keep your eyes on this one guys and uh, yep, uh, let's see how this is going to play out. But uh, for now, for now, um, it, it still we are more we're, we're more bullish than bearish, but probably still cautiously bullish. Uh, and uh, in a way, how we could play this one out is uh, if you if you are a little bit on the cautious side as well here, then wait for a push back above the 1611 territory and in a way from here we could potentially consider uh, we could consider uh, some higher levels we could aim for then for the 1645 zone but uh, yep of course this barrier here is the the one to watch as well because a break above this would confirm a forthcoming higher high and yep higher levels could be then met uh, but from for now for uh, let's say from the more of a near-term perspective uh, um, keep your eyes on the 1611 zone uh, if we get a, a climb back above this territory then yes uh, we could get a little bit more comfortable with higher levels for now uh, we are still somewhat positive somewhat cautiously bullish uh, because we are still above this 1575 territory and the upside support line so if we continue to trade here then yep uh, we could see another round of buying here leading to to the upside and uh, then, yep, we'll we'll take it from there. Uh, but as, be very careful if we suddenly drop below the subside line. Still, for us to consider further declines would be a drop below the 1547 zone. So keep your eyes on that one. 
uh, DXY. So I talked about this one. Um, I talked about this one this week as well. And uh, what I was saying that in a way, what we're looking here for is a push back above the 99.91 zone in order to consider higher levels. And um, and uh, basically, if um, if we do see um, if we do see a push above this barrier, then yes, of course, uh, then we'll start considering the upside again. But for now, anything up until this uh, this this barrier is considered to be a temporary correction before another leg of selling. So that's why the bulls should not get their hopes up yet. Uh, let's let's see how it continues to trade in around this 99.91 zone. Uh, that's by the way the high of the 20th of February, and uh, if it continues to struggle to overcome this barrier then yes we could see another uh, round of selling um, for now for now we'll like I said it's a very interesting at the same time interesting um, but at the same time tricky spot uh, again if it continues to trade here if it struggles to overcome this then yep we could see another round of selling um, if uh, for those who are more on the cautious side well uh, what you could do here is maybe keep an eye on uh, this little target here. Let me just quickly put this one on the chart. This little intraday uh, inside swing high of the 30th of March, and in a way, if we drop below the 99.32 uh, territory here, then yes, we could maybe consider some <clears throat> deeper extensions to the downside. So yep. For now, guys, uh, keep your eyes on this one. Uh, I, again, it could be quite interesting, but uh, for now, at, as long as it remains below this 99.91 zone, we will class this move higher as a temporary correction before another leg of selling. AUD, NZD. Um, here, the uh, I wanted to quickly show you, I, we haven't looked at this one for quite a while. Um, let me just actually clear up this chart a little bit. and. Uh, uh, so basically, looking at this four-hour chart, we can see that the uh, pair uh, did try to make move higher yesterday. It, it created a new high for this week around the 1.0351 zone, roughly around there, 52 zone. Um, uh, and now the the pair is drifting lower and drifting back below its 200 EMA and below and almost kind of trying to move below its 100 EMA here on the four hour chart. Um, also, what I wanted to show you that it's still above this upside support line, which continues to hold the rate from dropping lower. But if suddenly this starts dropping below this upside line and we see the uh, the rate falling somewhere uh, below uh, below here probably well not not this one but this one right here the 1.0175 uh, territory then well I mean deeper extensions to the downside could be possible again for now it's uh, it's a little bit of a uh, an interesting spot as well uh, because we are still above this upside support support line. However, the the pair moved back below its uh, 200 EMA here on the four hour chart, and uh, in a way, I mean, this kind of puts us in a little bit of a cautious position. Uh, but but as I said, uh, as long as this this upside support line remains intact, there is still a chance for the bulls to drive this one to the upside. If by any chance the pair starts climbing back above the 200 EMA here on the four hour chart, then yes, can, we will start considering again, <coughs> excuse me, We'll start considering again the the current highest point of this week at, at 1.0352 uh, territory, roughly around there. Um, and if that gets broken, then yes, this of course would confirm a forthcoming higher high, and the uh, higher levels could be met for now. Uh, it is where it is. It is at, stuck here at this point. Um, but um, yeah, it could present itself with a nice opportunity here, uh, especially either if it climbs back above the 200 EMA here on the four hour chart, or if it breaks this upside line and falls below the 1.0175 territory. So keep your eyes on that one. Uh, USDJPY. So here, uh, the pair, um, after kind of failing to move above this 108.58 zone, I talked about this one this week, um, and the, the pair drifted lower. Uh, however, what I was talking about that we need to see a nice good clear move below the 107.10 uh, zone here, or even better, the 106.82 zone. So I talked about these two levels uh, this week, and basically uh, you can see that the pair drifted lower, tested the 107.10, even broke it below below it 
but then kind of uh, it kind of quickly reversed uh, back to the upside here so for now I would say we're a little bit more on the neutral side uh, because still as I've mentioned we need to see a nice good clear uh, f at least a four-hour candle close below the 107.10 uh, zone uh, and then yep we could uh, aim for maybe lower levels um, now the of course the next level to consider could be around here the 105.12 um, or even 104.48 zone but again for now uh, we cannot really talk about that until we see that clear for our candle close uh, below the 107.10 zone in terms of the upside now previously I talked about this level the 109.64 but given away given that we have moved away from this barrier probably this becomes a quite a significant one to watch so the 108.58 zone so pre the one that I've uh, highlighted had highlighted here and uh, so basically, in other words, we need to see a nice good, also a clear, a clear uh, four hour candle close above this territory before we could consider some higher levels. Again, for now, for now, guys, be very careful. We'll, we will remain a little bit on the neutral side and uh, yep, continue observing the price action here. But uh, I would say we're leaning more to the downside here rather than the upside. Um, and uh, of course, this comes in line together with the DXY idea, and of course, the whole fact that if the indices uh, are remain on the weaker side, and the yen buying resumes in that case, then yep, um, we could see this one this one dropping lower. <clears throat> um, USD CAD now. And this week I talked about uh, this pair and uh, on uh, Tuesday I talked about when we were uh, still basically hanging around here we were already above this highlighted territory um, what I was saying in my traders uh, tea time that um, in a way we could see this one climbing a little bit higher but if it struggles to overcome this downside line this could lead to another round of selling and look at exactly what happened so the the pair, uh, the pair drifted lower, dropped below this highlighted area, and kind of uh, then moved a little bit lower. So uh, this is this is exactly what happened. Almost managed to reach our target here near the 1.3986. So basically, this scenario worked out nicely. So let's get rid of the arrow here, and to be honest, let's tidy up the chart here a little bit as well. Because um, first of all, of course, we'll keep this downside line for now. Um, we will get rid of this highlight area area because this is no longer in a way valid because uh, we have violated this territory and you can see that it's kind of pushed higher than then and now it's dropping lower again so in other words we can get rid of these two previous levels that we looked at um, and uh, this we're not going to over overcrowd the chart now here uh, what we're going to do is we're going to monitor this territory here the uh, 1.4325 26 zone in order to aim for higher levels we need to see a break above this level in order to aim for higher levels uh, and ideally we would prefer to see a nice good four hour candle close at least a four hour candle close above this territory and then yep we could consider then a, pot a potential move higher um, now in terms of the downside we'll take a very very conservative approach here and wait until we see a drop below the 1.39 986 zone and again the same story at least a four hour candle close below this because as you can see we did have a break below this level here previously but it never kind of even closed the four hour candle below it so that's why we would prefer to see something like that uh, here uh, something like a drop and a close uh, of a four hour candle below this level before we could consider further declines because this way the uh, the uh, the pair would confirm a forthcoming lower low and potentially could drive this one uh, lower for now we'll, all this territory here is somewhat of a neutral one for us because guys don't try to kind of uh, uh, kind of let's say gamble here because in a way it could drift a little bit lower it could find support near the 100 EMA here as it did, as it did previously yes as it did here uh, on 31st of March and then could reverse and push higher again so that's why we would prefer to wait for that break uh, one of our levels here that I've mentioned before considering a further directional move. GBP is the quick mentioning of, of this one. For this one probably let me just jump into a daily chart here and uh, of course as you probably already can see we do have ourselves a nice potential um, flag here pennant um, basically a bullish scenario 
uh, potential bullish scenario uh, with a nice pole here. Uh, you can see that this this flag here, uh, the pair is flagging out right now. Uh, but as I've mentioned previously, um, we cannot really talk about the upside yet until we see a clear push above this barrier, the high of last week, uh, or should I say, uh, is this correct? Yes, the high of last week uh, near the 1.2485 zone. So this way, if we do get a nice good push above this, this would confirm a forthcoming higher high. And the next target for us could be around the 1.2726 territory, which is marked by the low of the 28th of February and also coincides uh, with the 200 EMA here on the daily chart. Um, so good potential target here, but we need to see a nice good clear break above the 1.2785 zone first. In terms of the downside, now, um, basically previously I talked about uh, these levels here and to be honest I will stick to the same levels the 1.1950 zone uh, would be an ideal territory for us after which we after a break of which we could uh, aim for the downside now uh, again uh, for now the 1.1950 by the way is the lowest point of 2016 that's what happened after Brexit uh, that's the, the drop we had here in uh, after Brexit vote and um, here that's the reason why we would look, like to see a drop below this territory and uh, yep then we could consider a further de decline however uh, all this territory here below the 1.2195 zone but above the 1.1950 would be somewhat of a neutral one for us because um, here it's a very tricky spot it could move around sideways here and uh, basically a lot of traders could get stopped out so that's why if we do see a drop back below the 1.2195 probably remain neutral until we uh, in uh, until we see a drop uh, below the one or should I say if we see a drop below the 1.1950 because that's the level after which we will consider uh, lower levels and finally your USD now here the situation is uh, difficult for the uh, for the buyers let me just jump for in, into the four hour chart and also a little bit difficult for the sellers i would say because yes we have drifted below this territory below the 1.0952 I, I spoke about this level previously and what i was saying that um if we get a drop below this level then yes we will consider uh, deeper extensions to the downside however um as you can see it did tra travel higher it oh sorry it did travel lower uh didn't really quite reach this even level and reversed or uh, very quickly so but of course it continues to trade below the territory so basically I would say a little bit um, that yes we are a little bit more uh, bearish than bullish uh, we are cautiously bearish I would say on this one because um, on yes the fact that it's trading and, and struggling to get back above the 1.0952 territory yes of course that kind of creates an opportunity for the sellers here but um, probably uh, be very careful here because again we're not far from these uh, EMAs here on the four-hour chart, um, so this could in a way draft, uh, drift higher and test these uh, you know these EMAs and then maybe reverse to the downside. So something like this could be possible. I would say that this is a little bit uh, tricky right now on the euro dollar. Um, Another reason why it's tricky because um, looking at this four hour chart and I'll draw something very quickly here and uh, let me just um, capture capture this high here and uh, draw something like this. So yes, we do have a downside line, but on the other hand, we do have a potential uh, veg pattern here. So a falling, uh, a falling veg. Now, according to all the technical analysis rules, guys, these uh, tend to break to the upside. So that's why this, this makes us a little bit cautious here. And, um, in, in the way, ideally, in terms of the downside, uh, we would like to probably wait maybe for a break above the 1.0888 territory and then uh, maybe aim for lower levels because, as I've previously said, yes, uh, as I've mentioned in my previous videos, that uh, if we do see a drop below the 1.0952 territory, then yes, we will aim for the downside. However, given that the pair kind of actually drifted lower, didn't re even reach this territory, the 1.0888, and then we kind of reversed earlier in levels say even reversed too early um, this kind of forms this potential kind of falling veg which again these tend to break to the upside so um, and uh, 
yep, if, like I said, if the DXY, as I've mentioned, show you recently, if the DXY starts dropping lower here, uh, then could this could this idea could come into play and we could see a push higher a break of this uh, of this upper side of the falling wedge and then well I mean higher levels could be met now here what I'm gonna do is in order to aim for higher levels I would probably uh, wait for a push above this little territory here the high of the um, the 31st of March and that's roughly around the 1.1037 zone um, if we do get a push above that then uh, well I mean we could consider some higher levels again for in terms of the downside uh, we'll wait for a drop below the 1.0888 just be, to just just to be on the safe side because again uh, we do have ourselves like I said a, poten a potential falling veg and uh, if so then well these tend to break to the upside however we'll be very careful here as well and wait for a push above the 1.0 uh, 1.1034 37 1.1037 zone here and then we could consider uh, some higher levels okay guys i really hope you found it useful um thank you very much for sticking around and watching it till the end if you want to join me or should i say if you want to catch my video uh later on at my, tr uh, my traders tea time uh after around 13 15 gmt time um and uh yeah uh we'll we'll pick up on some of these instruments some new ones and see what how the market uh, has performed um in the kind of in the in, during the european session and uh yeah we'll we'll take it from there guys i hope you have a i hope you stay safe i hope you have a uh, nice trading day guys and uh, be very careful don't over trade have your stop lo stop losses in place and everything will be fine so have a wonderful day guys and i'll see you later bye bye